of all colours, of all creeds, came together to put Hackney in the history books tonight. And this result has been a victory for faith, a victory for principle, and a victory for socialism. Yeah. It's symbolic of change in the society, a symbol of hope for young people, particularly in the inner city. And there'll be a lot of work to do defending my people, my community in Hackney against what's going to be, I mean, horrific things under this new Tory government. As the returning officer for the constituency of Hackney North and Stoke Newington, I hereby give notice that the total vote, number of votes given for each candidate at the election is as follows. Diane Julie Abbott. Labour. 18,912. Yeah. 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 Yasmin Trina Anwar. Red Front. 228. David John Fitzpatrick, Green Party, 997. <laughs> Oliver Letwin, Conservative, 11,234. <laughs> Simon Howard Taylor, Alliance. 7,446. <laughs> and I declare that the said Diane Julie Abbott yes, yes. has been duly... So a very good vote there for Labour. Diane Abbott becomes Britain's first black woman MP with a majority virtually unchanged over 1983. There were great fears that Miss Abbott's outspoken view views would lose votes but in fact she's held up, the Alliance are up slightly at the expense of the Conservatives. I didn't hear anything. Has been duly elected to serve as a Member of Parliament for Hackney North and Stoke Newington constituency. The, num the number of ballot papers rejected and not counted by me at this election was as follows. Want of official mark, nil. Voting for more than one candidate, 46. Writing or mark by which voter could be identified, one. Unmarked or void for uncertainty, 51. Total, 38,915. Thank you. I'd like to start by thanking the Mayor, Britain's first Bengali Mayor. I'd like to thank the returning officer and the counting agents and all the people that worked all day on the polling stations. I'd also like to thank my agent who couldn't have worked harder. And I want to say that the result tonight is first and foremost a triumph for Hackney North and Stoke Newington Labour Party who worked incredibly hard and fought a positive campaign. They fought a campaign on the issues and they fought a campaign designed to unite rather than divide. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go on to say that the result is also a triumph for the people of Hackney North and Stoke Newington who came together, who came together, people of all colours, of all creeds, who came together to put Hackney in the history books tonight. a long way 
to stand here before you tonight. And I am aware that a lot of hopes, not just in Hackney, but across the country, ride on our victory tonight. I hope and believe that I can fulfil those hopes. But I also know that nothing can take tonight away from the people of Hackney. This campaign and this result has been a victory for faith, a victory for principle, and a victory for socialism. Yes, and we're entertaining Paddy Ashdown, fresh from his victory in Yeovil for the Liberal Party, and Diane Abbott, fresh from her victory to become the first black woman MP ever to join the House of Commons. Paddy Ashdown, if I could come first to you, you just saw David Owen setting off from the airport to fly back here, and Alistair posed the question, will he join the Liberals or will the Liberals join him? What's the answer? Well, I've always argued inside our private councils and indeed outside as well that we have to form a unified force to honour that promise we made to the British electorate in 1983 about fighting together as this indissoluble force for the principles and policies we believe in. And I'm sure that's going to be first on the agenda in the future. Well, there was a great deal of talk of, of your being unified during the election campaign, but what are you saying, that it really means one party? It means one party in my view. These are matters that have to be debated in the open democratic structure of both our parties. We'll all have our independent views. My view has always been that that is the ultimate logic of where we are now. And I've always argued, incidentally, also for the last two years, that this concept of two leaders simply would not work. And, of course, so it has turned out. We must solve that problem, too. Well, there's four or five years to go, and the Labour Party do seem to have, have reasserted their position as the, the main party of opposition. How are you going to prevent yourselves over the next four or five years just, just being a kind of irrelevant nuisance? Well, I think you really shouldn't take too simplistic a view of what's happened. The Labour Party have fought an excellent campaign and reached what is, I think, their maximum vote, 32% or so, rather less than a third across the country. The reality of the matter is that this has been their second worst result since 1931. It's been the Alliance's second best, including the history of the Liberal Party. And if you look at the place where the Conservative Party now has MPs, two-thirds of them, in two-thirds of those seats, the Alliance came second. So when the Conservative Party becomes unpopular, as I believe inevitably they will when they see the effect of another four years of Mrs Thatcher's divided Britain, uh, then it is the alliance that is going to pick up those seats. And I believe that if you look at the potential, the Labour Party has reached the top of its curve, the alliance has got everything to grow for. Well, Paddy Ashton, you're returning to the House of Commons. Diane Abbott, you're, you're joining it for the first time. Behind us is the place uh, where you'll be clocking on. How, how important, how significant is it, do you think, that we have at last elected a black woman MP? Well, just to respond to what Paddy Ashdown said, obviously he's whistling in the dark. The one thing this election has proved is the Alliance has been thoroughly trounced and that when people vote for the Alliance, it simply means you put in a Tories with a massive majority. But to go on to your question, I think it's, it's very symbolic. It's symbolic of, I think, change in the society. I think it's a symbol of hope for young people, particularly in the inner city. I think it has a high symbolic value. Now, New MPs tend sometimes to get lost. It doesn't matter what their reputation is outside. They either get lost once they join the House of Commons or they certainly get cut down to size. Uh, are, are you afraid that that might happen to you? I don't plan to get lost. And there'll be a lot of work to do defending my people, my community in Hackney, against what's going to be, I mean, horrific things under this new Tory government. What do you want to do? I mean, you're obviously suggesting you're, you're going to be mainly a, a constituency MP, but do you have any broader ambitions than that? First and foremost, I want to deliver for people in Hackney and defend them against Ms. Mrs Thatcher's plans for the education service, Mrs Thatcher's plans for local government. But obviously, I'm very interested in international affairs and I think it ought to be possible to find a broad consensus to push for economic sanctions against South Africa to bring down that regime. Now, you're seen as being on the left 
of the Labour Party. Quite a lot of extreme left-wing MPs have been elected now. I'm thinking of Ken Livingstone, Paul Boateng, Bernie Grant. Is Mr Kinnock going to be under some pressure and in some difficulty from you all? Mr Kinnock has fought an extraordinarily successful campaign and nobody can take that away from him. I think what everybody will be concentrating on now is defending the North and Scotland and Wales and the poor of this country against Mrs Thatcher. But there has to be an inquest on what happened. I mean, would you say that Mr Kinnock is far enough to the left for you? I would say that everybody, everybody says that nobody could have fought a better campaign in the past four weeks, no one.